Hey, Bishop Jakes. How What's are you? What's up, man? Oh, man, it's so good to see you. It's, it's so better good. to see you. How you doing? Looks like you're out in the sun. I once had Diddy text me, welcome to the family. But I was by a platinum selling producer who was one of his cohorts. In the whirlwind of accusations swirling around Diddy, the latest bombshell comes from an unexpected corner. Mace, his former artist, now a pastor hurling scandalous allegations at both Diddy and his close confidant, Pastor T.D. Jays. Mace, breaking away from his pastoral restraint, has unleashed a torrent of revelations that have left the entertainment world reeling. He accuses them of engaging in homosexual rituals and other occult practices, a claim that, if true, could shatter the public personas of these influential figures. Happy birthday to you. Mace's intervention in this controversy is not just a random outburst. It follows a pattern of accusations that gained momentum with Kessie's expose against Diddy. Mace's accusations are particularly grave given his transition from the music industry to the pulpit, which lends a unique credibility to his words. He articulates his struggle in balancing his past connections with his current spiritual calling, stating, if the devil can use him aggressively, then I want you to know God could use me aggressively. This juxtaposition of spiritual warfare against worldly corruption forms the crux of Mace's allegations. At the heart of the storm is T.D. Jakes, a figure whose flamboyance and focus on wealth and fame have often raised eyebrows. His relationship with Diddy, marked by mutual attendance at high-profile events and parties, has fueled much speculation about their personal lives. Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? <laughs> I mean... Jaguar Wright, not one to mince words, has publicly questioned Jakes' motives for associating with Diddy, hinting at the underlying dynamics of their relationship. Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? If Bishop Jakes was at a Diddy party, there could only be two reasons. Money, or that's all that happens at Diddy parties. Sex. This statement captures the public skepticism about the nature of the bond between Diddy and Jakes, T.D. Jakes, a name synonymous with large-scale evangelism, has been a divisive figure courting controversy with his teachings and his involvement in the secular world. His association with oneness, Pentecostalism, which holds unorthodox views on the Trinity, has been a point of contention among traditional Christian circles. Blessing is in what you got left. And if you will sow what you got left, God said, I'll give you back whatever it was. Modalism, the belief system he's often linked with, contradicts mainstream Christian doctrine about the nature of God. There is one God, creator of all things, infinitely perfect and eternally existing in three manifestations, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, states the belief statement at the Potter's House, a deviation from traditional Christian Trinitarian beliefs. Jakes' reach extends beyond the church walls, impacting millions through his televised sermons, conferences, movies, and books. His influence in the broader culture is evident in his associations with figures like Oprah Winfrey and American presidents. However, his teachings, especially concerning the societal role of women, have sparked backlash. In a sermon, he controversially stated, We were not designed to receive from women. Sin came into the world because Adam broke the order. We are raising up women to be men. These views, deemed regressive by many, further fuel the narrative of a pastor at odds with societal norms. Adding another layer to the complexity of Jakes' public image is the scrutiny of his sexuality, particularly in light of his son's arrest for soliciting homosexual sex. This incident has reignited rumors about Jakes' own sexual orientation with the African-American LGBTQ community, speculating about the nature of his vehement anti-homosexuality stance. The arrest of his son, Jermaine Jakes, and the subsequent reactions have cast a long shadow over Bishop Jakes' vehement public denunciations of homosexuality. I was homophobic, but I'm not homophobic, and I really don't, you know, care, you know what I'm saying? I just... But um, I'm bad at the game, and it's probably hilarious. I would love to see it. The narrative then circles back to the intertwined lives of Diddy and T.D. Jakes. Their relationship cemented over the years through shared appearances at events and Diddy's involvement in Jakes' church initiatives has been a source of endless fascination and conjecture. Diddy's participation in Jakes' sermon series on Revolt TV, a platform founded by Diddy, is indicative of their symbiotic relationship. This partnership, as Diddy described, aims to inspire millions around the world to have hope and walk in their power the scandal takes a darker turn with Mace's allegations of homosexual rituals involving Diddy and T.D. Jakes. These claims, though unverified, have stirred a frenzy of discussion about the nature of celebrity, power, and the hidden practices within the entertainment industry. Mace's revelations, coupled with the existing rumors and allegations, paint a picture of a complex web of relationships, beliefs, and hidden agendas. And, and this is God's world, you know, it's his plan. The controversy surrounding Diddy and T.D. Jakes is emblematic of the murky intersection of celebrity, religion, and personal conduct. 
Maze, once an insider in Diddy Circle, now stands as a whistleblower, challenging the established narrative and forcing a re-examination of the figures we often view through the lens of their public personas. As the saga unfolds, the line between truth and speculation remains blurred, leaving the public to grapple with the unsettling realities that might lie beneath the surface of celebrity life. In the shadow of the unfolding scandal, Kessie, once a prominent figure in Diddy's life, both professionally and personally, has stepped into the limelight with harrowing accusations. Her lawsuit, filed in federal district court in Manhattan, paints a starkly contrasting image of Sean Combs, known globally as Diddy, from the suave music mogul to an alleged perpetrator of prolonged abuse and violence. Kessie, whose journey with Diddy began when she was just 19, accuses him of a decade-long pattern of control and abuse. After years in silence and darkness, I am finally ready to tell my story and to speak up on behalf of myself and for the benefit of other women who face violence and abuse in their relationships, she stated, breaking her long-held silence. This disclosure reveals a disturbing side to Diddy, significantly deviating from his public persona. The allegations are nothing short of shocking. Kessie describes a relationship marred by substances, beatings, and coerced sexual encounters. According to the suit, Diddy's control extended beyond her career to aspects of her personal life, paying for her living expenses, and even having access to her medical records. It paints a picture of a young artist swept into a world of luxury and control where dissent led to violent consequences. One particularly disturbing claim is that of Diddy forcing Kessie into sexual encounters with male sex workers while he filmed the acts. Dubbed Freak Offs, these events involved costumes and were conducted across various high-end locations. The suit alleges that Diddy provided substances during these events, which Kessie consumed to disassociate from the traumatic experiences. Substances were supplied at these events, which Miss Ventura's suit says she took because they allowed her to disassociate during these horrific encounters, the lawsuit states. In her lawsuit, Kessie also accuses Diddy of sexual battery and violations of New York City's gender-motivated violence law. Her narrative describes a life under constant surveillance and control, where rejection of Diddy's wishes could lead to severe repercussions. The lawsuit recounts multiple instances of physical abuse, including an incident in 2009 where Diddy allegedly kicked Kessie repeatedly in the face, causing her to bleed and subsequently had his staff seclude her in a hotel room for a week to recuperate. So she claims she did try to leave several times, but Diddy would always send his team to find her, track her down, bring her back under the basis that her career would be ruined if she left. The control exerted by Diddy, as per Kessie's statements, was all encompassing. He paid for her car, apartments and clothing and even had access to her personal medical records. The lawsuit alleges in one account, she details how the results from an RI scan, possibly for memory loss due to substance use or physical abuse, were sent directly to Diddy. This level of control over Kessie's life speaks volumes about the dynamics of their relationship. No, I oh feel like mo in more re relationships than not, it was a mutual decision. Right. And if not, then it was like, I was like, that's done. The lawsuit also details the sexual exploitation and trafficking Kessie endured, where she was coerced into sex acts against her will. In one instance, described in the court papers, Miss Ventura says that in early 2012, Mr. Combs grew so angry about her dating the rapper Kid Caddy that he said he would blow up the rapper's car. Around that time, the suit says Kid Caddy's car exploded in his driveway. This blatant abuse of power and control over her body and choices highlights the severity of the allegations against Diddy. Kid Caddy confirmed it? That the car blew up. That, re that really happens in real life? You'll be blowing up cars? Kessie's ordeal culminated in a harrowing incident in 2018 where Diddy allegedly forced himself into her apartment and committed a sexual offense against her. This act, described in the law suite, was the breaking point for Kessie, who left him for good after this alleged violation. Kessie's bold step in coming forward with these allegations aligns with a broader movement of women in the music industry speaking up against abuse and exploitation. Using her dream, her talent, holding it hostage for his own benefit, in response to these allegations, Diddy's lawyer, Ben Brothman, has vehemently denied the claims. Mr. Combs vehemently denies these offensive and outrageous allegations, Brothman stated. He further accused Kessie of attempting to blackmail Diddy for $30 million with the threat of a damaging book calling the lawsuit a concoction of baseless and outrageous lies. Douglas Wigdor, Kessie's lawyer, countered this claim, stating that Combs offered her an eight-figure sum to prevent the lawsuit, an offer she rejected. Mm -hmm. I'm going to fight for my reputation. I'm going to fight for the honorable man I am, the righteous king that I am. I'm not perfect. Kessie's lawsuit emerges as a poignant reminder of the often hidden dark side of the entertainment industry. It exposes the grim reality behind the glitz and glamour, where power dynamics can lead to exploitation and abuse. Her story, a chilling narrative of control, abuse, and exploitation, lays bare the stark contrast between the public image and private actions of a figure like Diddy. 
Cassie's lawsuit is more than just a legal battle. It is a fight for her voice to be heard. Her statement with the expiration of New York's Adult Survivors Act fast approaching, it became clear that this was an opportunity to speak up about the trauma I have experienced and that I will be recovering from for the rest of my life, echoes the sentiments of many who have suffered in silence. In juxtaposition with the accusations against Diddy, the involvement of figures like T.D. Jakes in Diddy's life adds another layer of complexity to the narrative. The influence of such personalities in Diddy's circle raises questions about the extent to which their beliefs and practices might have impacted Diddy's behavior and actions. As this saga of secrecy, scandal, and accusations continues to unfold, it leaves us with more questions than answers. What do you think about the intertwining of celebrity and personal misconduct? Do the revelations about Diddy and T.D. Jakes change your view of the glitz and glamour associated with the music industry? We want to hear your thoughts, so drop a comment below and join the conversation. Farewell and stay informed.